everybody. Here's a plan that I did for a new landowner. This is going to be all new project. This property, it sits right up on top of a ridge. House is down here. Nice pond. It's a beautiful place. Real remote. Lots of woods around. There's some state land. You can see that state land starts up there. So what we have here is a food plot that really isn't looking too good right now. It's about four acres. Some of it has come back in blueberries and uh, acid-loving brush, okay? This area has been worked pretty intensely, and the soil is pretty well worked up. Soil test shows uh, pretty positive results. I really like it. There is a redneck blind right up here, and I suggested, first of all, to move that blind down here. Um, it turns out there, there's a bunch of trees in here, and you can get in and out of that stand without being detected, where this location kind of looks like you're lording over the whole area, and it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb up there. So the reason he called me is because, as usual, the reason people call me is that they're not seeing any deer. Uh, this place can produce some really nice bucks, and um, we want to fix this up so he can start seeing them, get in front of the rifle. So this area is all thick um, crab apples, Ortegas, and things like that. And that continues around this side. This is a fairly steep hillside with a bunch of junk growing on it. And the mid-story has a lot of striped maple, which is a problem. You often get that after you do some harvesting and you have a, a cool northeast facing slope like that. That's perfect setup to get striped maple because it's very good at growing in the shade. This is a what I call an oak heath forest where there's blueberry in the understory and mostly oak in the overstory. Perfect place to do a burn. So I put that in as plan is to burn this area. You see how you have a, a trail going all the way around it. There's a trail actually it's up this way as well. So you have food plot, food plot, trail, and you can burn that very easily. So that's going to help with habitat. Quite a bit of buck sign up and down here, and quite a bit of feeding sign in here since they had good red, uh, red oak acorn drop. And the oak continues down through here, and it falls off into a kind of a thick valley down here. This is real open woods with a few patches of mountain wall, which is a great thing to have. One of the things I want to do is to get rid of this pine plantation. This is all red pine uh, and uh, Scott's pine. So I want to cut that all and take it out of there if possible. You know, I have to talk to loggers and see if they want the job. It's only 10 acres, so it's kind of small. But hopefully I can also cut this hillside off. This hillside is too thick. It needs to be regenerated. As you can see, it has closed canopy. And there are some very nice red oaks in there. And if we cut all the junk out, like the birch, the poorly formed red maple in there, aspen, get all that cut down, even if we have to leave the material, it's going to do wonders for the habitat. There'll be browse in there, places for them to bed down, and we'll get a lot more growth and more acorns out of those red oaks. So now this uh, pine over here, it's a closed canopy uh, pine forest, not quite closed, but it's pretty thick. and it's big enough, the, the individual trees are big enough that someone would like to have those for pulpwood. And this is a fairly flat area. The soils are pretty good. It's pretty stone free. So I like it for a regeneration area. We're going to take a lot of pine out of there. It's really a biological desert for deer. Deer don't want to be in there. The only thing pine does for you is if you like red squirrels. That's about it. So we want to take as much of that pine as we can, get rid of it. And I have an area painted in as a, uh, a fenced in area of four acres that could either be fenced with some sort of mesh fencing, or we could put a slash wall around the whole thing using the trees that are in here. And that'll keep the deer out for a while. We can put a couple gates in so we can get in and out. You can come up this trail here along the edge, get in. 
plant trees and shrubs. So we're going to put in for some assistance for all this stuff. If we don't get the assistance, that's okay. We might want to just plow ahead and do it anyway. But this is a perfect area to take the trees out that were planted years ago and start putting native shrubs. Uh, we can put apple trees, pear trees, and make uh, you know a tree food plot out of that. Okay, so basically we have thinning to do. We have some burning. We have regeneration. And over here in the food plots, uh, we're going to put in some. Th this area is in clover. And I noticed that deer were pawing down through the snow to get at what was growing there, even though it's pretty much down to the dirt. Um, I think we can encourage that clover with some spraying and maybe a little bit of fertilizer, not much, but mainly I want to try and regenerate the soil in this area and make sure that the biology is excellent in there. And we're going to do that with cover crop food plots. We're going to put a highly diverse planting in here. And I thought we might try in this area along the edge and up to this tree, we can put in sorghum. And I'll plant sorghum with um, cowpeas. So cowpeas will theoretically spiral up the sorghum plants and provide a high protein forage all summer. And then when the sorghum ripens off, deer will be attracted to that. And if deer are bedded down on this slope, they'll come up this way and feel really comfortable to come out in that tall sorghum and stay hidden and be able to get some grain. Okay, so that's the uh, the hunting part of it. And then down here, we want to do a pollinator planting. There's no sense in mowing grass, okay? So we have a, a spot here that's seasonably wet. So we can pick out a, a flowering mix that we can plant there that will handle that, that wet soil. And then we'll put clover in these areas. You know, any place that we have an opening that is being mowed, we should just plant clover and spray the grass out so that we don't have, number one, you don't want to come up to camp and mow grass. You want to relax and look at deer feeding on your clover. You can sit on the porch at the house and watch deer out here. There's actually a, uh, a gas well here. And one of the things I'd like to do is put a stand up in this corner somewhere, somewhere in the corner of this property to take advantage of the fact that that well is going to act as a pinch point. And if deer are flowing back and forth this way, say pressured deer are running around trying to get away from hunters, they might come through there. The other thing is, as far as the hunting of this property, I think there's been quite a bit of traffic coming up this way on four wheelers and getting into stands that way. Okay, so what we want to try and do is come down here. Uh, you can see down in the corner here, it looks like the prevailing wind is south southeast. It's real warm today. Um, so the wind is going up this way. So in that case, it might be excellent to come in this way. Maybe park your, your buggy up in here, walk in, get into stands. There's a stand here that I think is an excellent spot, especially for this wind, because this looks like a pretty good mountain laurel bedding area. Um, most of the time here in Pennsylvania, the wind is blowing out of the north, west, and the west. So it's coming across this way. So what you don't want to do on a day like that is to come up here and spread your scent all over the top of this ridge, make noise. You're just announcing to all the deer that might be hanging out, you know, here we come. We're coming to hunt, and they run off and hide elsewhere. So one thing I want to do is make a trail that comes up this way and come up this way. You can you can walk down or drive your four-wheeler down to the bottom here, come up the hill. It looks pretty steep, but it's not that bad, really. And you can come up, make a trail that leads out into the corner of this field. You can set up there if the wind is really funky because your wind is going to blow. This drops down more than what it shows here. But if you had a stand right here, your, your scent would blow out over this hill. And then you can hunt this field. You can hunt halfway up, get deer that are rambling around back and forth, especially if we regenerate that, thicken it up. You can sneak into this stand 
without blowing out this whole area. Okay. So we want to make sure we have hunting access from a couple different points for different wind directions and thermals. You know, your thermals are going to be heading down this valley in the evenings. But if you want to do an evening hunt, it's probably best to go up and sit right up in here. Okay, so that's the gist of it. And this all gets written up. Uh, I give the landowner a plan map. It's all annotated with everything we're doing. And then I do a more involved plan to give to NRCS to see if we can get through funding to do projects. Um, so some of those projects that NRCS doesn't want to have anything to do with food plots, but this TSI that we need to do here, the herbicide that needs to be done on the striped maple, um, we can do herbicide work on ferns. They probably don't want to hear about prescribed fire, so we'd have to, we, we're kind of on our own with prescribed fire. Um, I put in for this uh, slash fence. So, you know, if they're willing to pay like two bucks a foot to the, uh, to the logger, he might be interested in creating that slash fence. That's a tough sell for a logger, but um, because they want those trees. So, um, all right, that, I think that about covers it. Hey, if you guys want to get a plan for your property, if, if you're tired of not seeing any deer and you want to make things better, give me a call. Uh, we'll take care of your timber resources and we will take care of your food plots and make sure that you're set up well for hunting your property. All right, talk to you soon.